So it's a gorgeous day outside. Figured I'd uh, take the Veloci out. Just cruising some private lake roads right now. Ripping around. Had like four or five people test ride the bike uh, last night. I plugged the, my, end, my XT60 connector in and my headlight and taillight worked and everybody was like, well, that's cool. I need a little air in my tires. I haven't put air in them in a while, so I'm probably pretty inefficient right now running at about 25 PSI because I can feel it, but that's all right. I'm really uh, a little disappointed in this battery pack because uh, it's uh, a real low 2C LiPo pack and it's got onboard BMS built into all these cells that are in, there's like 50 of them. So anytime one cell falls under this uh, low volt threshold, the entire pack just shuts off and it doesn't even warn you. And obviously this LED cage down here is for sealed with acid and it's completely incorrect to this 12 cell 50 volt battery. But uh, oh, we got the mail mailman. Should have honked my horn at him because it works, but I'm carrying my camera. This one has no uh, mud guards on it. So I obviously don't ride it in the rain. But everybody was surprised at how fast it gets up and goes. One kid has a 450 uh, on off-road enduro bike and he's like, oh my god, this thing's so sweet. <laughs> he kind of wanted one. But these things are so smooth and comfortable and anybody can jump up on it. It's really low to the ground. And it's got a really neat uh, rear suspension linkage, so the shock's completely horizontal. And even if you weigh like 400 pounds and you sit on this thing, it's only going to drop like an inch. So you don't have super crazy chain growth or really saggy suspension that uh, somebody that's heavier would really not not like. They wouldn't be able to use. Like uh, for instance, my Kuberg bike with my R my DNM. RCP Burner 3 rear shock, even though I got the heaviest 850 pound spring in it, when my 220 pound butt sits on the thing, it, it drops down like five inches and it goes from a really tall bike to kind of a, a semi not so tall bike. This one, it doesn't even matter. It just drops an inch no matter what and stays in its sweet spot, which is really nice. This road's been, uh, you know, little ups, little downs. Right now we're on a little downhill, so we're getting going. bracket for my directionals in the front. I haven't cut it down yet. I'm not sure if I want to. But these bikes are just amazing. I don't know why they didn't catch on. Obviously the price was set a little high. They were about $3,000 retail. And the battery technology just really sucked. You had to buy a $800 nickel metal hydride extra battery pack and they took forever to charge and only went about 10 miles. So since we're out in the middle of nowhere, I can pop the bike up on its kickstand, which is absolutely amazing. This bike was designed so well, it's not even funny. You can pop the kickstand up anywhere and the bike stands and has no trouble standing. And then you can just roll it forward and coast away and the thing springs right back up like it's never even there. And it's just such a sleek profile, this bike, that when you when you lay it in the back of your truck, these these pegs fold up and you can't even see them. They don't even touch. Like the side cover is what's going to touch. It, it, nothing gets hurt. It's just super slick, the way that they were designed. Oh, figures I have one car coming. The time I don't think I'll have a car coming. So watch, I'm just going to pull away right now. And I'm off. And the car is no longer worried about me being in his way because I'm cruising down the street now. It doesn't get any better than that. This 
road is super bumpy. Now these things were designed with uh, an RST front suspension fork. It, it sort of looks like a triple crown, like downhill fork, but it's obviously not. It's uh, a very early fork and there's no through axle. And uh, they were supposedly really, really strong when the bike came out and you were able to do like five foot drops, they claimed. I do have one of the uh, Velocity prototype bikes, the Zooter, I'm calling it. Uh, it's probably 20 pounds heavier because it's just a lot more aluminum before they sleeked it down like with the final production. But the front forks were completely bent on it. Uh, somebody did a stoppy or something with the front end and the forks completely bent. I just took them off recently. Obviously this tape, there's a little uh, duct tape covering my battery opening for my 12 volt supply. This is temporary. I don't know what I'm gonna put here. I might get some sort of a plastic cover made. But I just absolutely love ripping around on this thing. It couldn't be any more fun. I got the truck back at the house and I just prefer to ride around on this, especially when it's nice weather. Here's a little sand pit that we used to go ride our 300EX and 400EX quads on. It's got really bad lighting over here right now. Let me go. So I can just prop the bike up. It takes two seconds. I pull it back and it's locked on its kickstand and it's not going anywhere. Not only do these bikes look really cool, but if you own one of these things, I guarantee you're going to call it a bicycle, even though it is technically a scooter. I have a legal two-year moped sticker from my state. If you want to track me down there and be a weirdo, there that's the number right there. But these bikes are just amazing. They always amaze me. That's such a cheap rear shock too. Just an RST Pogo bouncy rear shock. And anybody can sit on this thing. And it's not going to bounce more than an inch. It doesn't even max out. You can see by looking at the plunger that this shock is perfectly adequate for what this bike is. The front end is a, a different story. The triple crown RST on the front end. It makes the bike look a little bit better because I've tried regular forks on a couple occasions. I just put a regular one on that Zooter bike. And it makes it look a little weird-er. It looks kind of more full with the triple crown on the front. But at the same time, if you put a new age triple crown downhill fork on this with a through axle, <laughs> it would look really awkward because they're like way beefier and like three times the size as this one. Because this one's really slim down. Uh, I don't even think it's one inch diameter tubing. It's like slightly smaller right around there But honestly the biggest downfall of the bike right now is the battery that I have in it I used it because I bought it on the endless sphere from a member really cheap and it's really cheap battery So I mean I probably only got 150 bucks into the battery pack But it just randomly shuts down sometimes so I may be switching something up I don't have a voltmeter on here, so what happens is I keep going on a ride expecting it to last and it just dies somewhere and it just shuts down because there's literally like 25 BMSs all running separate cell groups and if one shuts down, it just drops. It's kind of annoying, but I mean, it was full. I, I fully charged it yesterday to 50 volts and like I said, I had a couple people doing hard start and stops for you know 30 minutes with it, so I'm gonna try to get a ride in and uh, see what I can do. I'm gonna get onto a less bumpy road and try to get some speed out of it since I'm one hand in it. But you can just jump right over this bike without a problem, push it forward, and then start going. Now you noticed I had to reset the on off switch because I left the bike on, but it has an auto off feature which is sometimes really awesome, and then sometimes I've found it's not so good. I don't know what the cycle is, it might be like one full minute, 
but I was in the, in my city where I work in Worcester, and I was at a uh, a light right before our main rotary, and the bike shut off because the light was so long, and I like didn't know what was going on at first, and I had to realize, oh yeah, I have to recycle this, the the power switch to get it to reactivate because it it auto cycles it off. So sometimes you need to be wary of that. So I suggest that if you were at a long stoplight, like every you know 10 or 15 seconds, just pulse the throttle a little, little bit so your motor makes an activation, and it'll reset that counterclock so you don't get caught with it just shutting off on you. So if you hear the motor in the chain right now, it's going up a we're going up a slight grade. It's probably like a, I don't know 10 percent or something light. It's a little hill. But it does it like nothing. I could probably keep up with this car, but it's a little bumpy on this road, so I won't want it right now. It's so bumpy. Decent place to stop real quick. I just pull it back up on itself, jump off the bike, and it's completely supported and strong. Nothing to worry about. Here's a main road over here, so I don't know if I'm gonna film it because I want to get up and get some speed going. But the Veloci is an awesome transportation mechanism, and I suggest anybody that watches my videos and uh, decides they like one to message me. I have about 10 of them right now and uh, there's probably about five up for sale. And they're not uh, perfect right out the box because they all need batteries and chargers, but if you know what you're doing, it's really simple to hook a 36 volt battery up to this thing and have a, an awesome ride. You can keep the stock headlight. I decided to put a eBay LED headlight on my bike and I mounted it right where the old one was, which was a big clunky stainless steel looking thing, chromed out. And then I also mounted my horn centered. It used to be mounted off over here to the side. And now that I'm taking my directionals off, I'm gonna cut this bracket much smaller. And it's gonna make it look a little more clean up front, I think. Now in the back end, where the plate goes, I'm going to keep my uh, my directionals. They mount right here and right here, and they stick off each side. This is obviously my master key switch, which shuts the whole thing down. You don't need to take it out. Obviously take it out if you're gonna leave your bike somewhere. I got a big farm truck coming here, so I'm gonna end this. Oh, never mind. He took another turn. He would have barely fit by me on this road. So yeah, if I was to keep uh, commuting on this, which obviously I'm going to, this is my uh, project bike. You can see my 12 gauge wires coming up and feeding my battery. I put a little of that split loom around it or whatever you want to call it. But I need to get a voltage meter, so I'm gonna probably have uh, some, something 3D printed up here where I can have some sort of an LED gauge to gauge my voltage. And then I gotta put the, the rear blinkers on like I was just talking about. I don't technically need to, because in this state I can use hand signals, so I'm still up in the air about it, but I feel like at least if my rear directionals worked, I'd be happy because I tend to drive as fast as I possibly can, so if I'm you know going 30 all the time, I shouldn't have too many cars worried about the front of me. Most people would be worried about the back of me in city traffic. But this video is at 15 minutes and getting pretty long. So I'm going to end her.
shut her down. This is uh, Scott with the Veloci, and um, rest in peace, Nathan Ulrich, who I got all these bikes from. I really appreciate it, the chance to purchase his estate from his after his passing. And hopefully a couple more people can jump on the bandwagon and uh, join the Velocity Revolution here. And I think it's a great, uh, it's a great little commuter bike. Everybody loves it.